Okay. So, um, I can give you a couple specs as to where I'm coming from. Sure. My background is mostly technical, but I've been working with Sierra Club, and mm -hmm. uh, they want to go ahead and uh, use Google in their new site, uh -huh. and so I'm trying to figure out, okay, they want to use this thing, and they've been talking about it in terms of, hey, we want a more interactive site, and so forth and so on. Sure, hundred uh, percent. They know. Sure, they know what they're talking about, <laughs> but they have some ideas as to what they want. So I need to know a little more about it, so right. I can see if I can use it. Okay. So, but you you've made things. websites before, just not with Drupal. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've made websites before, but not with Drupal. Okay. So I've used PHP before, and HTML, and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. and or used uh, WAMP. That kind of stuff. Um, to, so I've used things like XAMPP and that kind of thing to build things and play around with them, and I'm familiar with that, those tools and so right. forth. Besides, so, mm -hmm. anyway, okay. Right. So, go ahead. Sure. So, um, yeah. I mean, you can see there Mamp too, but but sit. Sure. But, but, uh, is the Mac equivalent of all of this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Any in any of these, to, like to run Drupal, you need. Like the, what, what I'm going to go through is just installing Drupal on your own machine. The, the process is, is not very different when you're doing it on a machine that's connected to the, you know, yeah. that's an actual web server. But um, just in terms of beginning to work with Drupal, it's, it's very good to just do this on your own computer. So what, um, what we usually recommend is that you get something like XAMPP or if you use what, what's your computer platform of choice. Oh, I have a Mac. I have, yeah. Okay, so you would be looking for MAMP, yeah. um, which is at this website, MAMP.info. Okay. And uh, as it says, I mean, it's uh, it's MAMP stands for uh, Mac Apat. What is it? Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Okay. Um, which are the three things that you need? You need the server, the database, and then the programming language. Okay. So you just download this thing, and it gives you uh, where did I put it? It gives you this application that lives in your applications folder. Wake up. There we go. And uh, here it is. And so after you download any of these packages, you basically just run this thing, and it will give you this a control panel like this. And all it's going to tell you is that, hey, I'm running MySQL and I'm running Apache. Woo! <laughs> um, you, and suddenly you're, you're running an actual web server on your own machine. So um, the important part that seems to be a disconnect for you right now is that um, you need to know what the uh, folder is on your computer that all of the files are served from. So... MAMP in its little in its uh, settings here gives you a few um, a few things to look at, and in particular, um, you need to know this the document root setting, which is just you know it's a it's a folder, and it's where um, it's looking for all the files. I guess there must be something. In, yeah. It? So the H E docs file or that settings file that's not set right. Okay. My guess. Yeah, that could be. Well, I mean, it's, if, I if it's if it's running at all, it's just pulling from a place that you're not expecting. Well, it, it's pulling. It, it's okay. It's pulling. Uh, the fact that that file's coming up is telling me that at least XAMPP and so forth got installed. Okay, and it's pulling a file it expects. Yeah. But it's not pulling Drupal. Right. Uh, the way I'd expect. Right. I don't know. So what there, it there's it's there's doing. there's two ways to to get around that. Like the MAMP starts you off with it's it's some different path from this, but I, I like right. to use the the sites folder in my user folder um, because that like on Mac OS X it just comes with a sites folder in your home directory, and so it's just convenient. So that so I changed my setting to use this, um, and so it, do you want to do you want to look and see where. Um, well, I'm not that's happening for you. I can I can take a look, but the main thing is is that I'm not sure what is going to be dictating. I, I mean, I mean, open up XAMPP and um, oh. and look in there. 
Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, it's going to be, let's see. Let's see. I thought there was a um, it's, site there, folder something. Well, I mean, there. you can open up the, I, I would assume that in the actual XAMPP program, the, the running application, it probably will tell you somewhere in there if you open that. Because that, that's that's going to be the most reliable way to find out. Oh, you mean something like a README type of thing? No, no, I mean just switch switch uh, from the Explorer to XAMPP. Um, uh, in, okay. I or is it, or does it run on Windows as a service, not a, not a regular? Computer? Okay, I think I told it to run it as a service. Okay, so, uh, so there I must be. Have, uh, I don't know if I uh, shot myself in the. I think I installed it so it would run as a service. Yeah, but, the, but there's there's uh, probably a control there's no panel. I, yeah, okay, there was a control panel icon around here someplace. Oh, yeah. Here is a control panel icon. Yeah. Um, run it from your root, run this program. Okay, it said it failed someplace. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna we'll table this and come back okay. to it just so sure, I can get through fine. the whole the whole process. Um, <clears throat> and so after you change that setting, this is uh, this is spinning around to as it's restarting the uh, services just to uh, let you know it's doing that. And once the light turns green, there we go. We're back up and running again. So after uh, after you have that going, the next step is to actually download Drupal which you can do from the Drupal homepage. Let's see if the wireless isn't... Okay, this is fine. And I'm currently logged in, so this might look a little different for you, but um, just go to the download page and download Drupal 7, which will take you to the Drupal project page. And there, I mean, you know, there are a whole bunch of different ways you can install Drupal. We can go through a whole bunch of, uh, of them, but the most, the easiest one conceptually is just to find the right page to, to grab it and then download it. So on a Mac, it doesn't really matter which one of these, but I'll, I'll go with I'll go with the zip file. So we downloaded that, and now let me switch back to the Finder window here. In my downloads folder, and here's Drupal 7. So I'm just going to move that to a more convenient location. So this this folder that I've set up here for the Drupal demo is in my sites folder, which is where I told the uh, web server to look for it. So we just decompress that, and now I'm going to rename this. I don't want any hyphens in there. And so now uh, I can load up a new browser window. And the way MAMP is set up, you, uh, you go to localhost, which is the, um, the, it's the special name just, that just says my computer, basically. Um, and then if you've ever, I don't know if, you've, if you know what the notion of a port is, but um, a colon and then some numbers after a URL is, is a special port. Um, and uh, there's technical reasons why it's set up this way, but on MAMP, your, uh, your default location is, is this. So now uh, I installed Drupal in, my, in this folder called Drupal Demo and then Drupal 7. So if I switch back to here and go Drupal Demo slash Drupal 7, just matching exactly where I, where I put it, then we have this. Okay. Um, and so this is this will take me through the install process. Now, if I actually try and do this, it's not really going to help. I mean, we're not we're not ready to completely install Drupal yet because I haven't set up a database, and Drupal needs a database. So we can do that now. Oops. When you first uh, when you first start using MAP, when you run it it will probably load up this page for you, um, which gives you a bunch of things here. So you can, 
find out things like the version of PHP that's running on there, which most of the time you're not going to need to know, um, just at least when you're getting started. But the thing that's important is PHP my admin. Bad thing you'll run into on PHP sometimes is the tags for the PHP. I've had a lot of problems with those on a couple <laughs> applications. Uh, you Where, mean with the short tags and oh, the yeah. ASP mm -hmm. tags and stuff like that? <laughs> Some of the versions I've Bless used you. have not been set up wrong, and I had to go mess with those. And that's a good place to go get a quickie check. Sure, so sure. They're set up right. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can speak to um, with MAMP specifically. I know that the configurations are set, so it's it's not an issue. Um, and certainly no, for people I, who are who are starting no, out. No, I just took a class and they said do this, and I tried it the way it said, and it didn't work. Uh -huh. and after a lot of messing around, I found out more or less from that page that was what was going on. Uh -huh. It's it's a nice feature they stuck in there. Right, it gives you all in one place. Yeah, yeah, it is nice. So as you can see, I've got a a, a ton of databases here, but we're just going to create a new one. So I'm going to call this little demo. And you can just pretty much ignore everything else and just hit create. And that creates a new database. And you don't need to do anything with this other than that, um, just to get an installation going. So now that that's ready, I can go back to my installation page and just go for it. Um, so we'll stick with the standard install profile and we'll go with English, just to keep it basic for now. <laughs> Um, so now, now we come to the part where I have to actually know this database business. So um, again, I named this database Drupal Demo. So put that in here. And then the username and password uh, with MAMP and with most of these other uh, stacks where everything is built in, there's some default username and I think you can find out what it is in the settings. Uh, I don't yeah, maybe it's not in here. But I, I, I can really tell I I know that in MAMP it just sets it up with the username and the password both being root. Which would be terrible if you were doing this on the internet. <laughs> but when you're just doing it on your own computer where nobody else can touch the stuff, it's fine. And it keeps it keeps it simple. So so root and root, and there's a bunch of other options in here which we don't need to concern ourselves with, I'm pretty sure. We'll see if I'm right. Um, so I'll just save and see how we do. It looks like it's fine. Do you need to do anything for FTP stuff, or is that something that you pretty much assume that is on the server that you're going to use? And yeah, well, for the, the, we're just talking about installing Drupal just on your own machine, and right. you don't need FTP, okay. you don't need any of that stuff, because um, it's, it's all right Generally here. Generally speaking, it would be on server, you'd just be running a client to some server yeah, I mean, where uh, all your stuff was hosted anyway. Yes, uh, I mean okay. installing Drupal on, a, on another web server you would need to have access yeah. to FTP or some other kind of way of getting the files up there. Okay. Um, and so uh, Drupal is now installed and now we just have to uh, give it some initial information here so um, We'll just set up some basic stuff here. Um, administrator. I'm going to give it a terrible password. And, uh, oops. Set up this stuff. We're in Los Angeles. Great. And, uh, so this is just, I mean, this is all basic stuff. Um, I think at this point, you can't say everything in Drupal is self-explanatory, but I think this is fairly self-explanatory. So we just let that go. And that's it. And now Drupal is installed. Now we can go crazy. And this is this is still it's not the, this is technically the back end still, right? Uh, what you are now looking at is the front end. Um, it's, that's, what, that's what the website looks like. Yep. That when you first install Drupal with nothing in it, it has a default. Oh, it has a yeah. It has this default theme called. Uh, this is for Drupal seven. It's called Bardic, um, and uh, you are logged in. So it does look. It looks different if I log out 
it takes away that that bar across the top and everything. But otherwise, what's yeah. it called? Did you say uh, this this theme? Yeah, Bartik. Okay. B a r t i k. Okay. No, I know they've got all sorts of names running around, and if I can just correlate the name with something I've seen before, yeah, it helps. Yeah, if you if put you put it in the slot, this this is a, a brand new theme for Drupal Seven. Yeah. Um, so uh, unless you've played with Drupal Seven, you will not have seen this before. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm going to log back in. Um, yeah, I mean, so that's that's how to install Drupal. So wait, I'm confused now. Cause this, you're saying this is the website. Mm -hmm. It has that dashboard content, that bar. That yep. It's like a navigation bar. It is a so yeah. It's a, that is a navigation bar for the administrative components of the okay, site. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so, the thing with, uh, have, have you used, uh, like, I, I well, I guess use... WordPress doesn't do this. Have you used things like WordPress or whatever? Right. Um, yeah. So, like, with WordPress, to get to a lot of that stuff, at least with the default installation, you have to visit the WP admin section. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. With Drupal, it just, it presents you as, as the administrator or any kind of um, person with access to change stuff on the website. By default, it gives you this. Um, Drupal 7 does. So that black thing is the um, toolbar for Drupal itself? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so... It's not something you're going to be adding or subtracting content from. Uh, no, I suppose you could, well, but in all probability or not. I, I'll, I'll take you through what, uh, what this looks like. So, um, pretty much everything that you do in this version of Drupal 7 uh, in this version of Drupal, comma Drupal seven, um, <laughs> will load up again if we're if we're just talking about like the, what comes out of the box without you changing anything. Yeah. Um, it has this overlay business. So um, the idea is that you can do all this administrative crap that you need to do on your website, and then when you're done, you end up just back where you where you started as far as viewing your website or editing you know content or what have you. So um, so this dashboard, you know, it's not very useful when you first start out because there's nothing in your website. But uh, you can you can find out uh, you can you can decide you know what might be helpful, and it com it comes with a few boxes of stuff. Um, so this is not dissimilar from um, from WordPress's you know dashboard. Um, I think that some inspiration was probably taken there. But um, well, I know everything you can like drag and drop. Like, yes. Everything. Yep. So uh, so that's there. But uh, when you're first starting out, you're probably going to spend more time doing things like uh, creating or uh, editing content, which is all done in this area. And it makes sense. Um, Drupal comes with a couple of different kinds of content that you can create. I mean, the basic page is pretty straightforward. What everybody um, I don't, have you guys, do you have enough, uh, or have you heard enough about Drupal? I, I guess you wouldn't have, um, but you to have heard, heard the concept terms, of a node. But uh, what paid, I think one thing they're going to want more than anything is they want people to be able to, uh, people that don't know a heck of a lot about the thing mm -hmm. necessarily from a technical standpoint, just go ahead and be able to enter content for the page, so right. I think we want people to be able to walk in and uh, say, go ahead and go to a page that somebody else put together in a site and enter content for it, more like we were entering content for a newsletter type of thing. Uh -huh. All right, we'll d make the page for them to put the newsletter there, but they're going to be the ones that are putting the content in there and maybe may be updating it and changing it from day sure. to day to day. Sure. So that's more or less what kind of thing they're looking at and when I say active content type mm -hmm. of things. And it may be content for different groups. So we may have different pages and they're going to have to know how to navigate around. And right. People are going to want to go to their particular area more likely. So it's not going to be a matter of we're going to have to navigate through big masses. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and avoid it. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, you will. All of the things that you're talking about are possible with Drupal. No, no. I guess and, I'm just trying. Uh, and, what I'm trying to say is the idea of a page and so forth is probably one of the more relevant things, or probably will be more one of the relevant things, as I currently understand it. And yeah. The thing yeah. Oh, for sure. Do is say. Hey, forget it. That's not the way you do it because I've got probably got loads of misconceptions about what can or can't be done. Well, I mean, the, the, one of the things, like to me, the thing that uh, that can be the most terrifying aspect of of getting into Drupal as a novice, yeah. um, with as a as a novice Drupal user, is that it really is what you make of it. Yeah. So I mean, it's with Drupal seven. Some of this is starting to improve a little bit. The, like some of the nomenclature is changing to to make sure that uh, things are a little clearer. But um, it's expected that you're going to want something that is highly customized to whatever the, your needs yeah. are. Um, and you you can absolutely create a very basic um, website with Drupal. There's nothing to stop you. It's uh, it's just that it kind of assumes that you're going to want to do more than that. And so, as a result, it has more of a blank canvas feel than um, than something like WordPress. We're well, talking about a, a site that has, if, uh, I'll say, a minimum of fifty pages on it mm -hmm. right now. Sure. And uh, nationally, it probably has well upwards of. It's got upwards of a thousand. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's a huge organization. Right. So. Uh, and they just want to make some of the things more flexible. Yeah. And some of the pages, excuse me, right now are real turkeys. They're boring. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's just because nobody really has a very good way of doing it, and so they've just copied some stuff that existed before. And, yeah. Uh, some of the ways just didn't work very well. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, for for an organization like Sierra Club or anything like that, I mean. The, there's definitely going to be some conversations that you'll need to have as far as, uh, you know, figuring out editorial process and thing, things that are kind of like not, at first, really website-centric, but are more organizational. Yeah, and, uh, well, we had a problem with that because uh, we came up with, over a several-year period, came up with a design of what we wanted to do, more or less, or a concept of what we wanted to present, and somebody came in and more or less threw it out the window and said, no, we want you to do your things this way. Mm -hmm. And came down with a few edicts and so forth. And they're going to want something out the door uh, and up and running by beginning in July at the latest. Sure. So we're looking at three-month turnaround, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but the guts of what they want is really, uh, hey, You've got all these conservation projects and stuff like that out there, environmental, other organizations. Give them a chance to go ahead and put out their information on what they're working on or what their current efforts are so everybody can look at these. Yeah. There's lots of people out there that have. One thing they discussed was putting it in things like blog formats and they talked about WordPress and so forth. But WordPress, you can put it out like a blog, but doesn't give you a lot more flexibility. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, flexibility is. I mean, it's it's possible, but um, but it's not as built into the DNA. Um, yeah. I'll I'll go back through. Uh, I'll get back to this and walk through a couple more pieces. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions about? I mean, is is there anything that you're? I mean, I know that you're. <laughs> this is this is all pretty new stuff. Yeah. But I mean, is there anything where you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, I would really like to do such and such, and I have no idea how to do that looking at this. Well, for me, I guess, um, just because I just see the theme of it, I'm just like, I just want to immediately change it. Sure, <laughs> sure. All right, so, um, so let's, let's take a look at, at the appearance section here. So um, this is where you will be looking at, I mean, most of your time as a designer will be spent dealing with themes, mm -hmm. and uh, that's... That's what um, Drupal calls them. So uh, I could take you through, uh, I mean, so here we are. Bardic has uh, some things built in. I mean, you can do things like change the colors of stuff. And you know, w without, without touching any template files, you can do all this. Um, 
there are, so there are some things that you can change here, but as far as really what you're going to be interested in, it's probably not living in here. Right. Um, so I'm going to duck out for a minute to the actual Drupal files and show you how this all kind of breaks down. So <clears throat> there's a uh, when you're dealing with Drupal stuff, there's this notion of what's core, and then what's uh, what's contributed, and what's and what's yours, basically. So, um, as a designer, most of your most of the work that you're going to be doing is going to be in this site's default folder, and it doesn't come with anything but a spot to put files. Um, but what you're going to be doing is uh, let me. I'll, I'll just load up another um, example. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I have any Drupal sites that I can really uh, show you running. Um, but well, let's look in here. <clears throat> so in your... Um, I'm running a Drupal multi-site, so I have a ton of other little websites in here. But uh, what happens is in your sites folder, you have, you can put in a themes folder. And then this is where you would be working on um, your own design for the website. Um, somebody I was talking to said they were having trouble getting the multi-site stuff to work. And the basic question boiled down something like, okay, where do I configure it to use the right site? I've looked at things like the Apache configuration file, and I could do something maybe similar in there, but how do you do it in here? Um, we can, we, I'm let's, sure well, you're getting to there. But. Yeah, well, I, I'm actually, I'm not, I wasn't planning on going there uh, yet. Okay, um, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, so Drupal has this notion where you can run a whole bunch of websites off a single instance of the core files, so which is what I've done here. Like this is just all, all of this stuff out here is Drupal core. Um, and then for the different sites that I'm working on, I won't always do it this way, but for some of them, I have, uh, I've run a whole bunch of just individual site folders so that I don't have to have a whole bunch of copies of Drupal core all over the place. But anyway, um, you have this, Themes folder, and uh, so you can install, you can you can put in themes that other folks have done and modify them, which is the like the usual process for me. Building a a, a new Drupal site is to go to, uh, I mean I, you know, I don't necessarily do it this way in my daily work, um, but when you're starting out, you can go to the uh, themes page. Go steal one. Well, you, I, I mean, so there are, yeah. there is, uh, you can steal themes that are that are up here. Um, I don't know how our wireless is is loving me right now, but anyway, there's a there's a bunch of themes up there, but there are some that are called uh, base themes. Here we go. Okay, so there was a which um, which sessions have you did, were you at uh, earlier today? Uh, the state of typography and the with the Okay, okay. So you were not in any of the any of the situations where they were talking about base themes or any of that stuff. Okay. So um, these two, uh, Zen and Fusion, are two themes that uh, you can grab. And I'm gonna. Well, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do this do this the right way. Uh, but basically, it's a it's like. Um, like Bardic, um, you could take this and open up the files that run it, which are, I'm going to go back to the right folder here. And that is in the main themes folder. Here's Bardic. And so all the files that make Bardic what it is live in here. All the CSS files and, you know, the color changing stuff and the, uh, the various templates and whatnot. All that stuff is in here. So if you wanted to, uh, you could just make a copy of this folder 
stick it in your sights. Oh, I give myself permission to make this folder again. Your themes folder, and then stick a copy of Bardic in here. And then you could uh, modify it, and you'd have uh, something based on this. You, I, I wouldn't, I don't think the Bardic is the way you want to you want to do that usually. Right. But well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, the difference between base themes and I guess the themes that they have online, is it the base themes have less crazy code on the back end? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, the idea is that a base theme is not meant to be used by itself. It's, okay. The idea is that it expects you mm -hmm. to take it and modify it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's and, modified. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, it's, it's not or, you know, whether or not you would say that it's easy, it's meant oh, for that. Gotcha. That's, that's, its, yeah, that's its purpose in life. So, um, and the two most popular themes for that purpose, with good reason, are Zen and Fusion. And Fusion is, is made, Steph the Geek is right up there. Um, they're uh, top-notch themes. Her company is one of the, uh, is the top sponsor for this, this, very, uh, this very camp. So, um, if you wanted to and I think she will be presenting, I don't, I don't know if she's going to present on Fusion or if she's just expecting to help people with it. But mm -hmm. uh, you want to find out about dealing with Fusion stuff, you have, you know, the experts mm -hmm. are here for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zen is also a really good one. Um, it's one that I, I myself tend to use a lot. Um, it's, uh, it's, it has a few different assumptions about just the way layout works. Um, so Fusion is is a grid-based um, theme, so if you're, if you're yeah. used to things like Blueprint or 960.gs or any of those um, systems for grid-based um, web design, then Fusion would be the way you'd want to go. Um, Zen is a, uses a, it's a different layout model. Um, I'm try, I can't remember what it's called, but, um, but it's, it's another good one and uh, has a lot of helper stuff. Um, the guy that makes this one is a is a core contributor for um, the theming system in general in Drupal 7. Um, and uh, so you would do well by starting out with either one of these. In fact, let's grab one or both. <clears throat> and just put them in there so you can see how that works. So I'm just going to download the Drupal 7 version, which is not, there's no stable release for it yet. They're still working on it, but I'm going to, and I think that that can be said for Zen as well. So I grab those, and just, fusion, there we are. So, um, here's my downloads folder, and I have my Zen folder here. I'll go down into sites. You can put them in default or all uh, if you're, I guess I'll, I'll explain this. Uh, the, there are readme files here for both of these that will give you a little bit of a breakdown on that. But if you were running a, a Drupal multi-site um, situation, you could have a set of modules that you want on everything, and you can put them in the sites all modules folder or the sites all themes folder, and they will be available for any of your local um, sites. The disadvantage to doing that is if you end up with uh, different versions of things, or if you have sites that are moving at a different pace where you, uh, you get far enough along that maybe you want to upgrade a module or you want to mess around with it and you, or customize it in a way that would not be helpful to your other multi-sites, you'll have to do a little bit of moving around. Um, yeah. What if you have the same module in a uh, site-specific folder and in all? Does the site-specific override it, it or does it merge? Yeah, it, 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 over, it overrides it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't override so it. Can you back route that way if you have a more current version in all? Um, if, uh, if you have a more, I, I, I'm not totally sure about this, but I'm pretty sure that if you have the same module, regardless of version, um, okay, the one in the, the one in your specific site folder will, will take precedence. Um, 
So what I usually do, um, as far as the theme stuff goes, because uh, the, the base themes don't change so rapidly that I, I feel bad about doing this. So I put my base themes in my all folder. And then each of these, uh, well, actually, let's, let's go back to the actual browser. And I'm going to go back to the themes page. And let's see. Yep, here we are. So now I have these available. I have Zen and I have Fusion. So <clears throat> none of them is enabled right now, but they're all they're all known to Drupal. Is Fusion black and white because it's disabled, or is it nope, just that's that the, way anyway? It's just the, yeah, I mean, the, the, Fusion, the Fusion logo yeah, was is, just is black and white. The background was black because it was disabled state. Nope, it nope, that's, 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 just, that's just the way it okay. is. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enable Fusion as the, uh, as the theme now. It reloads, and as you can see, not much happening here. Um, this is, you know, it's a base theme, so there's not, you know, it's just uh, not, not really doing anything. They were saying sometimes you need to clean the cache out. Yeah, no, I mean, that, but that, effect. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I mean, depending, different, uh, different actions that you may be performing uh, will require you to dump the Drupal cache. Yeah, well, you change the cache. Uh, and and it's, it's, a, it's like important. That. It didn't take effect. Right, so well, there's a, everybody is aware of this notion of clearing your browser cache. Yeah. Um, but Drupal has an internal cache as well that it uses because uh, you know it's a, it's a very database intensive um, framework, and so if it had to ask if it had to actually run queries on the database every time you want to do anything at all, okay. it slows down in a hurry. So it caches some things so it doesn't have to um, make requests for them every time. And so one of the things <clears throat> that you always need to do is make sh if, if something that you did in your theme doesn't show up, um, you need to empty the Drupal cache. And uh, there, unfortunately, there isn't a, an easily accessible way to do this that's just built right into Drupal core. Um, but uh, there are contributed solutions that, that, are, um, that are available for that. We can talk about it at some point. I think like. they were using uh, the shell. Yeah, Drush, Drush will also help you with that. Hello, five minutes? Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to jump back out here and just show you a little bit more about this base theme stuff. So um, each of these, Fusion and Zen, comes with something called Starter Kit. Um, in Zen, it's called Starter Kit. In Fusion, it's called Fusion Starter. So the process that you use is you pick whichever one of these you want to use. There, the documentation for uh, for Fusion describes which of these you might want to choose. Um, Zen only comes with one, so there's no there's no deciding. But anyway, you uh, you grab your um, your starter kit, and you make a copy of it. Let me just drag it back out here to my oops to my default folder. Stick it in themes. And then uh, there's a process that you go through to actually make this thing your own instead of having it be called Fusion Starter Lite. So I'm going I'm to open this up real quick. And uh, I'm going to call this oops, Fusion Demo Theme. And I'm going to keep everything else pretty much as it is. Give this a new name. Fusion demo. I think with Fusion, I think with the Fusion starter kit, just changing these things is enough. Let's find out if I'm right. Let's also find out if this, uh, if this is actually going to find it. Yep, here we go. Fusion demo theme. So now I have my own copy of. Uh, this Fusion starter kit that I can modify and hack to pieces um, to my heart's content. And so that when you're, as far as like, you know, getting going, that's what you need to do. Um, and there's, there's going to be a, 
a birds of a feather session, I think later today on starting from scratch. So if you don't want to use a base theme at all, which generally I don't recommend, but if, if, uh, if you have a design that's, that you just can't find a way to use a base theme for, um, then you can, you can do this completely from scratch. And, um, well, I, well, why would you recommend to start from there? Because uh, as with, like, why would you, the, like, it's, just, it's the same reason that you would use something like Drupal to build a website when, if you're like a programmer, you might say, well, I can just build everything myself, and then I know that it's gonna work exactly the way I want it to. But um, if you use Drupal, a lot of the problems that you run into when you're building something have already been solved for you. So, uh, like, one of the, I mean, this is kind of a silly example in, in, in a way, but um, with, if you start with a base theme, uh, you get things like these, these little gear menus that you can see here. Um, the, things like this are just built in, <coughs> just nice little things that if you didn't use a base theme, you'd have to write it yourself, or, or just not have it. Um, and there are, it, it kind of puts you down the road of... Uh, of hopefully smarter um, theme building um, by <coughs> starting with a base theme. And I mean, to be honest, most uh, websites have certain patterns that they follow. Um, and as if you're, I mean, certainly if you're building stuff that's more like, that doesn't lean as much on the, on the online artwork side, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite honorable to, uh, to use a base theme. Um, and so <coughs> that. But there are different ones that, that can suit your needs better. Fusion and, and Zen are the two most popular, but they are far from the, from the only ones. There's one called Genesis. There's one called the, uh, Clean. Um, and there are others. Uh, I personally only use Zen or Fusion in pretty much all my projects, and I'm, I'm happy with them. And there are... Uh, the company that... Uh, like each of these is, is kind of driven by people who work for companies and uh, Palantir is a Chicago based web design firm that the guy who makes Zen works for and they have some examples uh, pretty much everything they do is based on Zen and you can it's often oftentimes you, you have you would have no idea just by looking at the website in a browser window that that was that was what they did right. um, no. is, is it the difference between Things uh, like cross-browser issues. If you're um, if you're building your own web design, no, no framework is going to save you from that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, there are there are a lot of differences between uh, Drupal and WordPress. But in if in terms of like big, huge picture, fundamental stuff, they're mm -hmm. kind of the same. I mean, they're, it's, yeah. they're both um, they're both systems that that let you uh, that let people manage, you know, a website. Right. Um, it's easier, I think, to uh, customize a Drupal site. Drupal assumes customization a little more than. Uh, well, let me back up. Drupal <laughs> assumes customization in a in a sense that uh, that you're going to want to do things your way a little more than WordPress does. I think. Um, we sat there and figured out, tried to figure out what we wanted the thing to do, and to some degree threw WordPress out because it wasn't, wouldn't let us do enough customization. Or it, we could do it, but it would be too much work. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so it's sort of like you've got several different tools. You can do it with all of them. Yeah, but Drupal's yeah. going to be a lot less work. Is what we kind of eventually figured out. Yeah, I mean, I, like one of the things for me that um, that is just a, a really basic thing that, that Drupal uh, does out of the box that WordPress can do, but just kind of hides it from you a little more, is just creating custom content types. Okay. So if you want to be able to say, you know, I mean, it comes with article and basic page, but if you want to have something very specific, like e even something as simple as like an event mm -hmm. with, um, with a date and a time and mm -hmm. things like that. It, you know, you can do that with Drupal out of the box with nothing more. Um, right. yeah. And it's and it's pretty easy to find. It's it's just assumed that that is part of what you do yeah. with it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas WordPress doesn't like doesn't really let you do that um, as easily. Mm -hmm. um, 
But, I mean, if you were, I, I still think that if your main concern with a website is a blog, then WordPress is probably a better choice. Right. Um, you know, with certain um, caveats. But, um, but it comes with things that people now, these days, expect a blog will have that Drupal does not just come with. It has all the tools, but it just doesn't come with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was awesome. Um, about the last 10, 15 minutes, but I don't know why I'm so glad. Um, you didn't so, have to record this. Oh, I did. Awesome. I, I, uh, oh, it's useful. 